Hey, you're watching The Voice of Revival. This is Chad McDonald. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us on this week's broadcast. Before we get started, as always, I want to take a moment and thank all of our special partners and friends, and those out there just like you that make this worldwide ministry so very possible. You know, it's the contributions, the giving, and the prayer and faithful support of those out there like you that hold my arms up like Moses and allow me to travel this world and preach the gospel in the demonstration and power of the Holy Spirit. And each week we receive correspondence through written letter, through emails, on how this broadcast and how this ministry has blessed so many of you. And I want to thank you. Your words of encouragement mean the world to me. I want to thank those out there watching. I also want to give a special token of love to everyone who watches this broadcast and gives a gift of any size. I want to send you a copy of my newest book, Casting Out Devils, for any gift of any size. So if you want to do that, you can go to our website, revivalfirewm.com. Don't visit the store, but go to the giving link. And in the notes, I want you to put, I watch this broadcast and I want to receive my free gift. And for any contribution of any size, I'll send you a copy of my newest book, Casting Out Devils, a handbook for moving in the supernatural power of deliverance. So you can give and do so through our website. Or if you want to write a check, you can make them payable to RFWM. That's Revival Fire World Ministries, P.O. Box 5444, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Hey, we're going to take a step inside a recent message and look inside a recent message that I've preached under the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. We serve a miracle-working God. Jeremiah says it like this, Behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? God asked a rhetorical question to the prophet Jeremiah. Is there anything too hard for me? And I want to ask you, right there in your kitchen, right there in your car, right there in that hospital room, or wherever it is you're watching this broadcast, is there anything too hard for him? I want you to know there is nothing too hard for your God. In the name of Jesus, all things are possible. Let's take a look, step into the word of the Lord, and I believe as you do, faith is going to come alive on the inside of your heart. Let's check it out. Because I think there's somebody in here tonight that came in and you need something to turn around in your life. So I've come to preach to you tonight and deliver a word of the Lord to you. A word from God concerning a turnaround. Look at your neighbor and tell him tonight it's going to turn around. Second Kings chapter number 9. Father, I thank you for the power of your word. Spirit of God, I thank you that your word will never return void. Tonight, Lord, anoint me to deliver that word. Tonight, Lord, I thank you for yokes destroyed. I thank you for burdens that are removed. I thank you for moving in the lives of the people tonight. God, I thank you for turnaround and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Kings chapter 9 verse number 1. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him gird up thy loins take this box of oil in thy hand and go to Ramoth Gilead and when thou comest thither look out Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat son of Nimshi and go in make him arise from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber then take the box of oil and pour it on his head say thus saith the Lord I have anointed the king over Israel then open the door flee and tarry not so the young man even the young man the prophet went to Ramoth Gilead and when he came behold the captains of the host were sitting and he said I have an errand to thee O captain Jehu said unto which of all us and he said to thee O captain he arose went into the house and poured the oil on his head and said unto him thus saith the Lord God of Israel I have anointed the king over the people of the Lord even over Israel thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master that I may avenge the blood of my servant the prophets and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel 
How many of you know tonight that the anointing has a purpose? Jehu was anointed by God for a specific purpose. That purpose was to avenge the blood of the prophets and to smite the house of Ahab. The anointing on him came for a purpose. There is an anointing on your life and it has a specific and a divine purpose. In fact, the anointing on your life is to put you in direct opposition to the enemy. That's the reason for much of the warfare in your life is because of the anointing. The anointing will attract an attack. Jehu was, a, was anointed to attack the enemy. He was anointed to smite Ahab's house. He was not anointed to just build his mailing list. He was not anointed to just join the mayoral association. He was not anointed to hang out with the ecumenical boys club. Jehu was anointed with a specific purpose. Let me remind you that Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Because he has anointed me too. There is a reason behind the anointing. The anointing's not just goosebumps, good services, and rolling around on the floor. The anointing has a specific purpose. I praise God for all of those manifestations of His presence. But the anointing has a specific purpose. And so Jehu was anointed to smite the house of Ahab. Verse number 9, for I will make the house of Ahab, or we'll skip down to verse number 11. You can read the rest in your private time. Then Jehu came forth to the servants of his Lord, and one said unto him, Is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto them, You know the man and his communication. And they said, is it false? Tell us now. And he said, Thus and thus spake he to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then they hasted, took every man his garment, put it under him on the top of the stairs, blew with trumpets, and said, Jehu is king. Verse 16. So Jehu rode in a chariot, went to Jezreel, for Joram lay there, and Azahiah, king of Judah, came down to see Joram. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel. He spied the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take a horseman, send to meet me, and let him say, It is peace. So there went one on horseback to meet him and said, Thus, saith the king thus saith the king is it peace and Jehu said what hast thou to do with peace turn thee behind me and the watchman told saying the messenger came to them but he cometh not again then he sent out a second on horseback which came to them and said thus saith the king is it peace and Jehu answered what hast thou to do with peace turn thee behind me and the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, son of Nimshi, and he, for he driveth furiously. Now I read a whole lot of scripture. But the, the story that we read in 2 Kings chapter number 9 is the story of how Jehu is anointed king over Israel. Now there's something specifically prophetic about this passage that I'm going to break down for you tonight. It begins with Jehu. The Bible said that Jehu is with his boys. He's with his, his men. And, and, and they're sitting there in the, in the house. And all of a sudden the prophet barges in and breaks up the meeting. God had spoken to the prophet and said, I want you to find Jehu. I want you to grab him. I want you to carry him into an inner chamber. And when you get into that inner chamber, I want you to pour the box of oil upon his head. Prophesy, thus saith the Lord. Turn around and run out the door the way that you came. And so Jehu is sitting there with his, with his crew, if you will, and all of a sudden in comes the prophet 
And the prophet gets into that room, doesn't say a word, doesn't announce why he's there, doesn't say anything. He simply barges in to this room, picks up Jehu, carries him into the inner chamber. In fact, the Bible is saying that he carries him to the inner chamber. It tells us that Jehu's feet didn't even touch the ground. He barges in the room, picks him up, and carries him by the nap of the neck into the inner chamber. He interrupts the conversation. He interrupts whatever it is that's going on in that room at that moment. He comes in there without announcing a word, picks up the man, carries him, his feet don't touch the ground, and he takes him into the inner chamber. And without announcing why he's there, without saying what's going on, he simply takes the box or the, or the vial of oil and begins to pour the entire thing on the head of Jehu. It was an inner chamber, let me remind you, where Jehu was anointed. You will get the anointing of God in an inner chamber. I believe in the transference of anointing. But I'm talking about that specific anointing on your life. I'm talking about that ancient anointing on your life. That will only come from finding a place in an inner chamber somewhere with God. Somewhere with the word of the Lord. Somewhere believing God. It is in that inner chamber where the oil was poured on Jehu. I need to tell you tonight that there is still oil available for you. And so the prophet comes in there and picks up Jehu and carries him into that inner chamber. And when he gets into that inner chamber, the Bible says he takes the box of oil and he begins to pour the entire thing on his head. Now, he didn't do like some of us modern Pentecostals do. You know, when they get the oil, they put just a little bit on the finger and they do just that little dabble do you type thing. You know, they, they want to be careful of your clothes and careful of your outfit. So they'll take that oil and they're going to be all nice to you. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil because you know that you know there ain't nothing special about the oil let me explain something to you there is something very special about the oil of God and so we you know they just take a little bit of oil and they just put a little bit of dab on your head just a little dot on your head but that's not how the prophet did Jehu he carries him into this back room and he gets the vial the entire box of oil and dumps it on his head he ain't worried about his outfit he's not worried about his Air Jordans he's not worried about getting oil on anything on his body he's drenching that man from head to foot pouring the oil in fact the oil is running down off of his face it's pouring down over his garment it's dripping all over him I think we get back to where we're not ashamed of the oil of God and so they drink they pour the oil out on Jehu and Jehu comes out of that of that inner chamber the prophet dumps imagine being picked up interrupted carried into a back room and without a word an entire gallon of oil is poured over your head and then he just says thus saith the Lord you're the king of Israel and he turns around and runs out the door and he's standing there with oil just pouring down all he sees is the dust from the prophet running out the door and Jehu, I'm sure, is gathering himself together. He's standing there soaked in oil. Oil is just running down off of his lips all the way down his outfit. And he's soaked in the oil. He must not have been a very big guy to start with if the prophet had, had the ability to pick him up and carry him into a back room like that. And he's soaked and coated in oil. And he's standing there trying to figure out what just happened. Because in a moment and in an instant, he was sitting there there having lunch with his boys and in that very same instant in came the prophet and his life would never be the same he's standing there where just a few moments ago he was eating a turkey sandwich and talking about what they do in the afternoon and now all of a sudden he's trying to get his bearing and he's sitting there and a word got delivered to him from God in an inner chamber and he's got this oil drenched over him and he's trying to figure out what just happened and so the prophet runs away and Jehu comes out of the room. He comes walking out of the room covered in oil. 
and his friends sitting there. Your Bible says they see him come back into the area where they were and they said, what happened to you? That's what it says. You know, the King James makes it sounds more poetic, but that's what it says. They, they look at him. They look at Jehu and they say, what happened to you? He comes out of the inner chamber soaked in oil. Everywhere he steps, he's leaving oil marks. There's oil just run. All they saw was all of a sudden he got picked up, carried into that room. There, and he comes out. Next thing he knows, the prophet is running back out of that room. And here comes Jehu, coated in oil. And they look at him and they say, what happened to you? And Jehu tries to play it off. Like most church folk coming out of a Holy Ghost meeting. He tries to play it off. He said, well, nothing happened. Just that mad, you know, just that crazy man. He come in. You know how he talks. It's that crazy prophet again. Nothing happened. He comes out trying to hide the oil. He comes out trying to hide that encounter with God. But he couldn't hide that encounter with God because his friends saw the oil on him. They said, what happened to you, Jehu? And Jehu said, nothing happened to me in that room. They said, you lie, Jehu, because we saw you go in and you didn't come out the way that you went in. You went in one way, but you came out of that room oily. We're standing here looking at you, Jehu. There's oil running down off of your face. There's oil all over your shoes. Everywhere you walk, you're leaving a trail of oil. Don't look at me and say nothing just happened to you what happened to you because we can see the difference I think it's time that we stop trying to hide the oil of God on our life I think it's time we stop trying to hide the move of the Holy Spirit stop trying to come out of that inner chamber and trying to hide what God did when the world is looking at you and they see something different about you he wants somebody to announce I've got oil They saw the oil. They saw the oil on Jehu and couldn't hide. He couldn't hide it. He couldn't deny what had happened. And he, he tries, he tries to, to blow it off. He says, oh, you know, just that crazy. And they say, Jehu, you lie. Tell us what happened. God puts the oil on your life not so that you can hide it. He doesn't put the oil on your life just so that you can enjoy it for yourself. The oil on his life was for a reason. They were sitting there waiting and Jehu said the prophet picked me up, carried me in there, poured the oil on my head and said thus saith the Lord, you are anointed king over Israel and to smite the house of Ahab. And what did his boys say? They said let's rock. As soon as he said that, they jump up and they get on their horses and they start to ride. There is a world out there that is waiting for the oil of God to activate their lives. There is a world out there. There are people out there that are waiting for the oil of God on your life to activate what's on the inside of them, to activate them into their purpose. Their purpose was to be activated so that they could destroy the house of Ahab. So he gets that oil poured on him, you know. But for some reason, we always be trying to hide it. You know, we, we dress it up. There's folks who say, well, you know, I don't believe in all that. All that speaking in tongues stuff. All that laying hands on the six, all that casting out, that devil casting out stuff will make people nervous, you know. Let's just put that stuff in the back room, you know. Let's put it in the back. I think, I think it's about time we get the oil out of the back room and get it out there where people can see it. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit's not that crazy uncle that shows up at Christmas time that everybody's ashamed of. You know, everybody's got that family member. They come up. Here comes that crazy uncle again. That's how they treat the Holy Ghost. You know, the Holy Ghost might, might show up and they say, Well, you know, we got to keep that stuff on our Thursday life group type. We're going to keep that on the, 
oh yeah, that's, that's for Sunday night. You know, we can't we can't be doing all that stuff on Sunday morning. We're gonna scare people off. Listen, I've been around the world. I've preached the gospel on almost every continent there is, and the only person, the only people, and the only thing I've ever seen get nervous when the Holy Ghost shows up is the devil. So if you get nervous and you're worried about making somebody nervous, the only person that ever gets nervous when God shows up is the is the devil. The only person that ever gets nervous when the Spirit of God shows up are people that are in bondage. So I think it's time we stop worrying about who we're going to drive out and start worrying about who's going to get set free. So Jehu couldn't hide it. They poured the whole thing on his head. He got oily. He didn't get a little bit of an anointing. He got oil poured all over him. There's something specifically important about the the anointing, about the oil of God. You see, David said in Psalms 23, He anoints my head with oil and my cup runneth over. But David wrote that from the perspective of a near eastern shepherd. He was a shepherd, in fact. And so when David is writing that, you see there in the east, what they would do is they'll they'll take the sheep and they'll pour oil on the sheep's head because that oil would be, become a protectant layer. It serves as a layer of protectant on the, on the head and the face of the sheep. And, and so they would pour that oil down over the face of that sheep and it would protect the, 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 the flies and the bugs from coming into the ears and into the eyes and from tormenting the animal to the degree that they would normally be tormented. So they would pour oil upon their head. So when David said, he anoints my head with oil and my cup runneth over, what David is saying is that he is the sheep and God is the shepherd. The Lord is the shepherd. And it is God that pours the oil of God upon his life that protects you from the flies and from the assignment of the enemy. The oil will serve a protectant layer over your mind many of you that are in bondage to anxiety and depression and crazy and jacked up thoughts it's simply because you need the oil of God poured on your mind your mind has been exposed to the attacks and and the flies of the adversary but tonight the oil of God can cause a, a, a protective layer to come over your mind you've got to learn to get the oil on your mind so he anoints my head with oil that oil is a protected layer. They'll take boxers and fighters and they'll, in, they'll put oil on their chest and on their body. Sometimes they'll try to sneak a little extra because when they fight, that oil serves as a protectant layer to deaden the blows of their opponent. When they get that grease mix and that oil smeared on their body, when they take a blow, it will cause some of the force to be deflected off of them so that they don't take the fullness of the blow and the gloves of their opponent will slide off and the blow just won't hit right let me tell you tonight that what you need against the assignment and the blows of your adversary is to get some oil on your life because the oil will make the thing that was supposed to take you out slide off of you the oil will make the thing that was supposed to break you up slide off of you the oil will make that thing that was supposed to knock you out slide off of you the the greatest and easiest way of escape is to put oil on it we were kids we'd get our bikes you know back when kids played outside and rode bikes we'd get our bikes and we'd flip them upside down we'd put that three in one oil all over that chain I mean we'd put like half a, a ten on that I'd have so much oil on my bike it'd be sloshing flying all over the place riding down the road it'd be going so fast I'd have my bike going so fast the wheels would be vibrating it, so much the chain would pop off it'd have so much oil on it you gotta get some oil on your life amen the oil will serve as a protectant layer it will cause the enemy to miss and so Jehu couldn't hide it. He, come, he comes out and he's soaked and drenched in this oil. And they look at him and they say, what happened to you? I believe some of y'all going to come out of here this weekend and you're going to go down to Applebee's or you're going to go wherever it is you go in the daytime and the people are going to look at you and be like, what happened to you this weekend? What happened to you? You look different. There's a different glow on your life. What's wrong with you? you different. You weren't like this last week. And you can tell them it's the oil of God. 
Some of y'all can show them it's the oil. Lay your hands on them in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love every time I come here, I love the fact that this used to be the largest bar in the area. Man. This used to be the biggest bar in town, right? How, how many years ago, but it was. Now it's the best bar in town. Amen. It's the best bar in town. Jesus is serving up wine. Amen. The Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about that Lutheran stuff. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost wine. You come out of here with oil on your life, people are going, <laughs> you get pulled over to cops. Be like, what happened to you in there? It's the oil. It's the oil. <laughs> police, I can imagine there's a police officer here. He pulls me over. Like, you've been drinking? No, sir, I just got the oil on me. <clears throat> I could tell you stories about Mariah Edder having her tent up, and they come in and they tried to shut her down. The, the demon possessed mayor sent the police department to shut her tent down. Yeah. Hey, friend, I thank you for watching this broadcast. And I pray that this message has blessed your soul. And I believe that even as you have watched, faith came alive on the inside of your heart. I want to take a moment and pray for you. I'm praying and believing right now that the power of cancer be broken off the lives of every person watching this broadcast. As faith comes alive in your heart, according as you have believed, may it be done unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed now. May your eyes be healed. May your ears be healed. May your body receive strength by the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible tells us that it is the anointing that destroys every yoke and removes every burden. And I believe that that same anointing present in those services that you just watched on this broadcast, that anointing is present and transferable through the airwaves of this broadcast as you receive it by faith. May you receive your miracle in Jesus' name. And I want to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to send us your praise reports and your prayer requests. Visit us on our web, www.revivalfirewm.com. You can see us there. Check out my itinerary. Find out when I'll be in a city near you. And listen, until next time, this is the Voice of Revival, the place where miracles still happen. Thank you for watching Voice of Revival with Chad McDonald. The Voice of Revival broadcast is the media ministry outreach of Revival Fire World Ministries and is made possible by the prayers and faithful support of partners like you. All gifts and contributions are tax deductible where allowed by law. For more information or to give, visit us on the web at www.thevoiceofrevival.com.